Well, you can see the bottle cap lid, Starbucks. Some sort of cap here. Don't know what it belongs to. This penny, I'm assuming they probably used for size. And then obviously the weapon of choice. Well, this is not how I wanted day one to go. Freezing cold temperatures. Um, it's sad, we are in the park. We are within Big Bend National Park um, borders. We've already gone through the checkpoint. We're on a nice dirt road here, and uh, I was able to spot this guy here on the road. Uh, I had a pretty strong feeling as soon as I saw this snake next to this rock, what happened. And um, my worst fears were confirmed. This is exactly what this channel is 100% about. It's conservation through education for this point exactly. Now this one, I don't think this snake was killed out of fear. It was definitely killed, 100% sure. And I am 100% sure, um, well, I'm 100% sure it was killed by humans. Um, and I'm pretty sure I know the reason. So there's really two reasons why people kill an animal just to kill it. One, uh, as the back of all my business cards say, is uh, out of fear. Uh, my favorite quote by anybody, it's on the back of all my business cards, it's by Chief Dan George. Uh, and he says, if you talk to the animals, they will talk to you and you will understand each other. If you do not talk to them, you will not know them. What one does not know, excuse me, now I messed up. See, I'm just upset about this. So, excuse me, let me restart. <clears throat> if you talk to the animals, they will talk to you and you will understand each other. If you do not talk to them, you will not understand them. What one does not understand, one fears. What one fears, one destroys. And that is so true when it comes to wildlife. It is, like I said, my favorite quote. Uh, because all these dangerous animals, as we as we put them in these categories, uh, we fear them because we don't understand them. And that's the main reason why we kill them. Um, however, unfortunately, I think this was reason two, and it's the worst reason of why this animal is killed. Neither reason is good. Um, but obviously, you can see here, it's missing its rattle. It's probably a pretty good size rattle, I'm assuming. And you can see a very sharp mark here. So I have a feeling this snake was on the road. They took this rock, crushed its head, and then cut off its rattle just to have a rattle. Um, so this animal, this snake, was obviously killed, poached, I should say it was poached for the rattle. Uh, and it makes you, makes you open your eyes that we're here inside of a national park and poaching takes place even in our national parks. So we're gonna honor this snake by taking him off the road, putting him somewhere where another animal can uh, enjoy the spoils and hopefully not get hit by a car. Uh, we also don't wanna leave him out here just looking like a trophy for somebody else that, that took him out. Um, but something I do wanna show you since the snake is no longer alive, um, we can at least look at a couple things. Man, this is not how I wanted to start day one. All right, well, we're going to do this. could actually use the GoPro for this guy, too. But we're going to pick up this hefty snake. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful pattern. So sad. So sad. Just in case. Yeah, he's dead. Rigor mortis is setting in. Man. What a crazy, crazy snake. Look at how big this rattlesnake is. So sad. All it was trying to do was live its life. It's bothering nobody out here in this beautiful park. Such a beautiful, beautiful animal. All right, let's see if this will even work. Rigor mortis might be a little too strong. Oh, let's 
see here. Let me adjust my hands here. Nope. Not going to work, and I'm definitely not going to force it. We're going to show respect to this animal. I was going to use them for a little bit of education uh, before we go hide them somewhere so nobody can mess with them. But, um, yeah, it's not worth it. We'll show respect to the animal. The rigor mortis set in, its jaw's not going to open, um, and we're just going to put them away. But before we do, let's at least get a little look at them here. So look at the beautiful coloration. Look at this nice, big, broad spade head. Got to watch it. Make sure his fang is hanging out. It's pretty close to hanging out, so I'm going to keep my fingers far away. Uh, even though it is dead, it could still inject venom. If I was to hit uh, the fang, it could still inject me with venom. So we're going to avoid that. Um, but right here, since we have like a one in a million chance of ever getting to show you guys this, these large uh, nodes on the side of the head, these are the venom sacs. These are where the venom is. And so you can see it has a very broad head. It is not 100% um, that... Uh, an animal that has a broad head like this is venomous, and it's also not 100% that an animal that has a very thin, skinny head is not venomous. And we are going to take this guy off the road. I'm not going to use my other camera. I'm not going to show you guys. Oh, wow. Well, there's the rock. There is said rock that they used right there. This from right here. And they walked over, killed the snake. Some people are sick. Oh, by the way, look at this. Look where we are. It's not a house, not a building. It's not out here bothering anybody. Look at this. This snake is in its natural environment. It is in the farthest reaches from human civilization, especially here in the United States. You know, outside of Alaska, this is one of the farthest areas you can get from a city, a town. Um, you are literally in the middle of nowhere. And uh, all this... You know, this is, like I said, this is why I started this channel. This is why I've been doing this for many years. I'm trying to educate the public on the importance of protecting animals, protecting species. You know, this animal helps with rodent uh, populations out here. Uh, if rodent populations uh, overdevelop, vegetation suffers. Those vegetations then help other species suffer, and it's just a... Uh, it is literally a spiral down slowly. Now, one snake, yeah, may not do it, but if everybody's out here poaching, uh, you see this, you know, and one snake is one too many, especially when you're out here in the wilderness. This isn't in your house, it's not in your backyard, it's not affecting you at any, at any rate. You know, this is literally an animal that is just trying to live, and it lives farther from people than most animals can, and uh, I bet it had no idea. And that day it was gonna slide out on the road and it was gonna be the end. Because some, literally some sick human being came and killed this snake to take a rattle. Let's find a nice spot for it. All right, you guys. Tell me what you think. We're up on a ridge. Nice little view. I think we're gonna tuck this beautiful snake in right here. Right. I Whew, that made me a little nervous. I know it's dead, but it's a weird feeling. I could feel my pulse through the snake when I moved my fingertips touching it and my heart was beating a little bit i could feel it in the snake that was a weird feeling all right give me a sec guys i'm going to i'm just going to set the camera down we're not going to make this a spectacle we're just going to set that down i'm going to put the snake let's see let's lay you right here sweetheart put your head on the rock all right let's see here what can we do with you Let's 
Let's bundle you up. Huh? Not fair, I know. Life's not fair. And a lot of times there's a lot of people out there that are good, good people. And they're trying to make a difference. And there are people out there that definitely ruin the experience for the rest of us. I'm sorry, sweetie. So here's our snake. We put the head out. We can look out at its view. I know it's dead. Trust me, I know. It's just something I do to make myself feel better. But I'm uh, I'm gonna turn the camera off now and say a little prayer. And luckily, I doubt we'll see this again. But uh, I'm gonna pray that uh, pray that we don't see this again on this trip. That's not a good way to start a 10-day trip. So, alrighty.